Thank hey, you for joining you? us. As I said, we got a lot of different uh, uh, topics to talk to you about. First one I wanted to talk uh, to you about, though, was this uh, drug that the South Carolina shooter was on. Tell us, uh, as a pharmacist, what you know about this drug, Suboxone. Yeah, so Suboxone is a uh, combination drug. It's partially something called Welbutrin. Perhaps you've heard of that. Uh, and then an, uh, the other component is an opiate-like drug, uh, opiate-like substance. The combination is used as is used recreationally. This kid, Dylan Roof, was using it recreationally. And that's something we see a lot with these uh, these people that quote go postal, as you you know, mm -hmm. shoot things up. They seem to always be on some kind of some kind of psychopharmacology. And what it really highlights is the fact that you can't mess around with the brain with pharmacology. You know, for the longest time, even doctors looked down their nose at the practice of psychiatry. And even today, many uh, uh, well-meaning medical professionals feel like psychiatry is kind of a pseudoscience. It's based in pseudoscience. And that's because there's no real diagnostic measurements for whether somebody is psychiatric, ha has a psychiatric problem. It's all based on conjecture and speculation. And even the diagnostics they, that they use is based on something called the uh, DSM, the Di Diagnostic and Statistics Manual book, which gets updated regularly uh, to include, by the way, uh, diagnoses like uh, oppositional defiance disorder, internet <laughs> shopping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, internet, yeah, I know the, the ODD. You know that, that that's one? A, I think, I think you might that. have that one. Yeah. I've been listening, Dave. I, I think you might be do. suffering. Right? <laughs> they want to characterize you know me as odd, you know, because I'm, I have an oppositional defiance disorder. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? But you know what that yeah. means? You can be drugged officially, and your insurance mm -hmm. company can, will, will pay for the drugs. In fact, there are cases when you have a diagnosis from a so-called medical professional of oppositional defiance disorder where you can be medicated against your will yes. uh, to, uh, to, to calm you down from this horrible disease, internet shopping disorder, et cetera, these crazy diagnoses. The point is, is you, you, with any pharmacology, with any drug, you're playing with fire. The human body is not meant to be manipulated this way. And when I talk about pharmacy, uh, pharmaceuticals being poisons, I'm saying that not rhetorically and not poetically, but I'm saying it literally. These things suppress biochemistry, and for some reason or another, we have been hypnotized to believe that we can somehow be better. We can somehow have our health improved by suppressing our biochemistry. Now, this has uh, implications in the human body in terms of uh, the viscera, in terms of the digestive system, and the heart, and the blood pressure, etc. But it has really, really egregious effects when we start to play with the brain this way. The brain is the most complex, uh, or, uh, complex living system in the universe, and to start to drug it, to start to poison it, to use pharmacology to manipulate it, uh, it, it is fraught with danger. It, can, it cannot help but lead to problems like all the things that we're seeing in terms of aggressive behavior and violent behavior. Let me say one more thing. There's these class of drugs called serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and I know you know about these. Those mm -hmm. they call SSRIs. And this is a new class of drugs, relatively new. It came out about 25, uh, 25 years ago, I think the... Uh, late 1980s, uh, these serotonin reuptake inhibitors exploit or leverage the misunderstanding that people have around this drug, this uh, neurotransmitter, this chemical serotonin. You know, David and Anthony, many people feel like serotonin, based on what they've heard, is a happy hormone, right? It, it's antidepressant hormone, makes you feel like life is good. Well, as it turns out, that's not the case. The serotonin is a vigilance hormone. It's an awareness hormone. It is the alternative or the antagonistic hormone to melatonin. As most people know, melatonin helps you relax, helps you fall asleep. Well, serotonin does the exact opposite. Serotonin is a daytime and vigilance hormone. And when you start to upregulate or you manipulate the levels of serotonin artificially to raise serotonin levels, which is what these reuptake inhibitors do, you get these hypervigilant states. And hypervigilance is the same as paranoia. And this is why aggressive behavior, violent behavior, paranoid behavior, school shootings, etc., are all associated with. Up, up regula artificially upregulating serotonin levels. The bottom line here is, if you have brain chemistry issues, neurotransmitter issues, if you want to work with your brain chemistry, the most powerful medicine in the world for manipulating brain chemistry is called food. And it's, uh, or it's called non-food, if you will. And by non-food, I'm talking about corporate swill, as I like to call it, which is the processed food that is pretty much rammed down our throats 24-7 via marketing and via commercials. If you want to manipulate your brain chemistry in a healthy fashion, Pay attention to the foods you're eating and pay attention to the foods you're not eating. Yes, that's very true. And, of course, uh, many of the ancient Greek doctors wisely said, let food be your medicine. Correct. They understood how that would affect people. And we're talking about these SSRIs. I think one of the 
the uh, scariest things about it to me is how it, it affects people while they're on it. But then if someone decides that they want to get off of this because That's of right. side effects or because of long-term health issues or something, once they get off of it, then everything goes Draws really it. crazy. That's right. You ha you end up with these withdrawal symptoms, mm -hmm. and that's another uh, another uh, uh, danger that's associated with psychopharmacology is withdrawal from these drugs. And that alone tells you about the potent nature of these substances. David and Anthony, how the heck did we ever get the idea that we can manipulate our body biochemically through pharmacology and somehow? be better for it. How did we extrapolate from antibiotics and pain pills, which by the way are very important and praise God that we have pain pills, and to a certain extent antibiotics as well, although now we're, uh, we're uh, reaping the harvest of antibiotic resistance, which you know anybody who understood how these things work could have predicted, and my pharmacy school professors did predict it uh, three decades ago. So leaving that aside, uh, the fact, uh, aside from pain pills and antibiotics, how the heck did it, it, the potency and the importance of pain pills and the life-saving potential of antibiotics get extrapolated to using prescription drugs for every single ailment that we have, for, for degenerative diseases and for psychiatric disorders and for weight loss and now, all of the things that we apply pharmacology to, how do we get from the point from where uh, pain pills and, and antibiotics save lives to, the, to, the, to 4 billion, 4 billion? billion prescriptions served. And I would present to you that it comes through through marketing, through branding, through advertising, through routes of uh, routes of administration that have nothing to do with patients and nothing to do with bettering our health and everything to do with the corporatocracy and profit margins. And to me, this is one of the most egregious, one of the nastiest ways that humanity is being manipulated is through pharmacology in an effort to, number one, uh, uh, reap profits and centralize money, but number two, control the population. About a year and a half ago, Anthony Gucciardi just said, man, I just did a Dr. Grip's liver cleanse, the one he recommends, and he's developing this proprietary stuff he's testing on himself right now. You really ought to do it. The results are dramatic after six days. And I'm like, no way, no way I'm doing it. I don't believe that there's giant black or green balls in my gallbladder, and this is how ignorant I am. And he's like, look at it online. I'm not looking at it online. Stuff like that grosses me out. I don't want to go there. Well, finally, about six months ago, they convinced me to do it. I personally think everybody should go through a liver cleansing if you haven't done one. Results speak for themselves. I mean, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people have done this, and, and it dates back even a thousand years, drinking oils to cleanse and purge the liver. Actually, the Greeks and the over in India with Ayurvedic medicine have done it the same way. But how it works is what you should do, and this is what our proprietary research led us to do back starting in the early uh, 90s when we were looking at the best ways to cleanse the liver, was to develop an herbal formula that contains herbs that will help soften or break down these glycogen are these stones in the liver and the gallbladder. This liver shield is the high quality proprietary liver trex developed by Dr. Grip that we've private labeled through him. And it's extremely strong, extremely concentrated, extremely high powered. You combine that with the oxy powder, oxygen based intestinal cleanser, dietary supplement, clinically tested. We have them discounted at the lowest price you're gonna find anywhere. Infowarslife.com. Obviously folks should probably talk to their healthcare provider before they do this. This is one of the single biggest results, if not the biggest I've ever seen in my life literally in a six-day period this is something anybody can do obviously the literature is well known on what liver cleanses do this is the best one out there from our research infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139